Sauce here. This is a video lesson on reciprocal functions. Let's remind us what a reciprocal is. A reciprocal is what we can do with a fraction. We switch numerator and denominator. So if we have a fraction a over b, its reciprocal is b over a. And of course, reciprocals are reciprocals of each other. So if we had b over a, the reciprocal of it would be a over b. Reciprocals are not equal. They're changing the expression into a different value. Unless, of course, you're working with 1. 1 is its own reciprocal. We can think of the integer 1 as a fraction, 1 over 1. And if you switch, it doesn't change it. So we'll make a note. Also, that the sign does not change. If we start with a positive value, or a positive number, or a positive fraction, taking the reciprocal of it doesn't change the sign. It's still positive. Likewise, if a fraction a over b is negative, and we take the reciprocal of it, it remains negative. Taking a reciprocal doesn't alter the sign of the thing. That would be the opposite. Here's something that happens with reciprocals in general. Larger numbers, when you take the reciprocal, become smaller. The larger the number, the smaller the reciprocal. Imagine 10. 10 is not very large. Its reciprocal is 1 tenth. But if you have a larger number than 10, like a million, its reciprocal, 1 millionth, is smaller. So the general trend, larger the number, smaller the reciprocal. And likewise, the smaller the number is, the larger the reciprocal will be. If you have a small number like 1 half, reciprocal is 2. If you have a very small number like a millionth, then the reciprocal of that is very large, a million. When you have a zero as a value, and you attempt to take the reciprocal, you will have an undefined number. You can't take the reciprocal of zero. You can think of zero as the fraction zero over one, and the reciprocal of that is one over zero, which is not defined. So zero doesn't have a reciprocal, and if you are going to take reciprocals of function values, on a graph, that would mean that every time there is an x-intercept, a value of 0, then it's going to become a vertical asymptote in the graph. And we'll see that visually in just a moment. So zeros become vertical asymptotes on a graph. And it's worth noting that the reciprocal of either positive or negative 1 is itself positive or negative 1. So with this review of reciprocals, we can graph the reciprocal function very quickly, guided by these concepts. If we had a graph, let's practice with a fairly simple one a transformed parabola. So the parent parabola shifted down 3. Here's its approximate graph. So this is a function x squared minus 3. What would the reciprocal of x squared minus 3 be? It's going to be 1 over x squared minus 3, a completely different function. But we can graph the reciprocal of this parabola quite easily. Here's how it's done. First, I'm going to look at the zeros or the x-intercepts of my graph of my parabola. Remember that we can't take the reciprocal of 0. 1 over 0 is undefined, and what that means in a function is that it's a vertical asymptote. And I'm going to draw vertical dotted lines to suggest that is where the vertical asymptotes of this new graph are going to be. 
Next, I'm going to consider this point right here, which is a minimum. It's the lowest point, and it has a specific value, negative 3. So finding the reciprocal of that will give me a concrete value to graph and plot. The reciprocal of negative 3 is still negative, 1 third. And 1 third is approximately here. So I'm going to put a point on my new graph right there. Next, I'm going to look for positive and negative ones because those points, when I take the reciprocal, are going to remain at the same place. Here we have the value of the function at negative 1. The reciprocal is negative 1, so this point is going to be on my new graph. So is positive 1 and this other negative 1 here. Now, the values of this function are negative, but they're getting very small negative numbers. So the reciprocal of a very small number is very large. That means that as I approach this vertical asymptote, I can show the values getting very large but negative by being very close. Now that I have these five points, I can go ahead and with confidence sketch the graph of the reciprocal of my parabola that's below the x-axis. What about above? It's going to go through these points. Well, very small positive numbers are going to grow to be very large, and very large positive numbers are going to become very small when I take the reciprocal. So I have a couple of points to guide the curve that will be made when I take the reciprocal of this positive portion. And because my parabola is symmetrical, then the curve that I make in the reciprocal is symmetrical, and I'll have the same kind of curve here. I'm going to now soften or slightly erase what I started with. And what I've produced is the reciprocal of x squared minus 3. It's got this curve down here, and what looks to be a couple of branches above. Let's do one more, guided by this concept, and graph cosecant of theta. Theta will be the horizontal variable. So cosecant, will be, we'll remind ourselves, is a reciprocal of sine. What does the graph of the cosecant function look like? Well, we're familiar with the graph of sine. Let's use sine's graph to graph cosecant. Sine starts at the origin, completes half a period at pi, completes a period, full period at 2 pi, and has maximum and minimum of 1 and negative 1. Sine goes up, comes back down, and then repeats because it's periodic. Cosecant will be the reciprocal of this graph. So zeros are vertical asymptotes. The reciprocal of zero doesn't exist. That's where the graph will have vertical asymptotes. Ones are reciprocals of themselves. So here, the graph of sine is, has a value of 1, and it will also be, that point will be on the graph of the reciprocal. In this section, I have vertical asymptotes. As the values of sine get very small, the values of the reciprocal will get very large. So with that principle, I could graph something that goes through this point and shows getting very large as sine gets very small. Likewise here, this point is on the graph, and as sine gets very large but negative, very small but negative, the reciprocal will get very large but negative, and it will be guided within those vertical asymptotes. Now, sine is periodic, so as this pattern and sine repeats, so will the graph of the reciprocal. So if I have these two curves, then it's going to be the same curve because sine 
sine's shape repeats. And to get a better sense of what the reciprocal of sine or cosecant graph looks like, I will slightly erase sine, and I could observe that the graph of the cosecant function is a bunch of these curves on either side of the horizontal axis.